Hey guys, how you doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone around the world. Welcome back to another Pokemon Unite video featuring Lucario here in the Master Rank. Today, looks like we're going to be running Score Shield, Attack Weight, you know, the usual, right? But at the same time that everyone understands how this mechanic works with Lucario, they think that as long as I bring, you know, points to the goal I score, I get profit, right? But that works in a sense, where Going up through these ranks, you will run into a lot of Lucario players who do this, but at the same time, they do it incorrectly or inconsistent. So generally speaking, you see how I have three Pokeballs and I'm ready to go, right? The more you score, the more that you can stack attack weight. Now, attack weight does have a cap to it, so you only can stack it up to a certain amount. There's not an infinite amount with attack weight, but the more Pokeballs you are carrying to that goal, the longer it takes you to score, right? What's the problem? You have score shield. But at the same time, if I'm running to a goal and I have 50 Pokeballs, it takes me a while to score that. Therefore, they can break my score shield and then I don't get a value out of it. So generally speaking, the lower the amount of Pokeballs you're carrying in your inventory, the easier it is to score. Therefore, you get value with attack weight. Now, you can do this with extreme speed. You can do this with Pirate Punch. Pirate Punch takes a lot more I want to say awareness on behalf of it's not as mobile as extreme speed. Now, again, you can go through walls with it, you can do a lot of damage with Power Up Punch, sure, no problem. But at the same time, to traverse the map to get back from your, your goal to the enemy goal, it's a lot easier to do extreme speed. The way extreme speed works is if you played Yasuo before, what happens is if you extreme speed to one target, you can bounce back to that target again as for a second time. But you cannot hit them again for a third time. So it's a lot easier for you to bounce between targets. In other words, you hit one target, then it hits somebody else, and then you can go back and then hit somebody else. If you hit the same target twice, your ability goes on cooldown. Now, the ability does do a lot of burst damage, and you will follow up with an auto attack afterwards. And that auto attack does work with Razor Claw, but today we're, we are not running Razor Claw today. We are running a little bit of a tankier build. But Razor Claw is viable on Lucario, and it does do a lot of DPS, and it does slow down a lot of Pokemon. Especially once you extreme speed through them. That auto attack that automatically happens after extreme speed does proc Razor Claw, and Razor Claw does allow you to slow them. Now, Pirate Punch, extreme speed, they don't crit, so keep that in mind. So Pirate Punch does do a lot of DPS, but regardless if you're putting on Scope Lens, regardless if you're using Razor Claw, which are crit items, that ability itself cannot do crit damage. It does a big a big number, generally speaking, but it does not crit. There, so there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to that. Like, you'll see Pirate Punch do like 1400 or 1100 DPS or what have you. You're just like, oh wow, I crit him. No, you didn't necessarily crit him, you just did, a, you just did big damage. That's all it really is. The longer you charge up Pirate Punch, the more damage it does up to a cap. But extreme speed, you don't have to sit here and hold the charge button. You just pick a direction, and then you go. And you will automatically deal damage whether you hit that target. Sometimes whether or not you, you think you hit them with Pirate Punch. Sometimes you go through them, and you don't deal damage to them. It happens to me, and it happens to your grandma, it happens to everybody else. But, extreme speed, I think you get more value out of it, just because in a team fight you can zip back and forth, you can juke a lot of Pokemon, and you can waste enemy the enemy team. It's time. In other words, when they're trying to chase you, if you jet through a B, come back to a B, hit the enemy Pokemon, go back to the other side of the B. You can sit here and waste their time as they're trying to chase you, therefore you get value out of that in the long run. Because essentially you're killing bees while you're getting experience while they're trying to chase you, and you're just wasting enemy's time. So it allows your team to sit here and capitalize on scoring or focusing on objectives or what have you. Now, we did get a brand new Pokemon that came out here as of yesterday. We picked up Decidueye. And he is he's a lot of fun. For those of you who haven't played him, I do suggest you do pick him up. He has 10,000 coins, just like how they normally are in a brand new Pokemon. So, I mean, they are a bit expensive. But if you're interested in playing a long-ranged Pokemon in which does a lot of burst damage, but at the same time requires more skill than your average Pokemon, because you do have to land your skill shots to be successful with him, he's a lot of fun. Now, in this squad here, we are playing a solo queue game. We do have a Zero Aura, we have a Decidueye, Venusaur, and a Garchomp, right? And right now, our Decidueye, I believe, was jungle this game, if I, re if I recall. I can't remember. Either way, he's level 9. He's not doing too bad. But there's two different build sets you can run with him. And right now, Lucario, I don't think he has an issue with dealing with Decidueye. 
especially because the situation night move makes him stand still. So if you're running extreme speed, you can essentially bounce back and forth, right? You get extreme speed, bone rush, you can power punch through him. You have no issue dealing with that Pokemon right now. And actually, I think he does counter him, I think, in my opinion right now. Especially just because you can get up in close. And the situation does not want to be there. Poor Blastoise. I mean, that was just bad. Either way, we're able to get up here, but capitalize on these bees and get this rolling. No problem. As you can see, we have all of our goals up right now, and I'm just trying to be a nuisance. I'm trying to score as many times as I can or apply pressure. If, even if I don't get to that scoring pad in time, or even if I don't score, the enemy team knows where I'm at, so I'm applying pressure on that side of the map. Therefore, they want to try to come deal with me, which is fine, right? I'm making value out of it in that sense. Now, Blastoise Unite move still does a lot of damage. Sadly enough, he was able to secure the Rotom, but he wasn't able to get away from us here. But you see how the CGY's Unite move is very, very difficult to control. Essentially, you go rapid fire and you have to aim it. And if you move it slightly, you go like far off the screen, left or right, what have you. Look at that. Again, into the wall. I feel bad for him, man. He's trying really, really hard, but at the same time, he's not going to be able to catch us here. And I don't get it where you have a lot of these Wavy Tough players right now who ends up running rollout and or, what do you call it? They don't run Lullaby, they just run crit damage items and stuff. They also are able to do the same thing that Lucario can do when it comes to scoring in the goal. Meaning they generally run like a goal getter or they run a rollout with Wigglytuff and they can bounce back and forth. They do what Lucario does right now pretty well, but at the same time it's a little bit inconsistent just because they don't have the sheer amount of mobility Lucario has. But I mean, she still works because it is Wigglytuff. She's bulky in a sense where she can do that no problem. But keep in mind, it does take her a little bit of time to kill objectives. In other words, like kill the wild Pokemon to pick up these kills, or pick up the coins and stuff. Lucario doesn't have to do that, because he does a lot of damage in his own right. You can also do this with Talonflame. And I think Talonflame is also very, very successful just because he has mobility. Meaning, Lucario also has mobility, but Talonflame can fly over the terrain, the walls, the what have you. He can get across the map very, very easily. And we shouldn't have to necessarily worry about it, locking him down. The final stretch. Now again, we necessarily You're don't need this fire. at base, right? But again, solo queue game. So we are we are gonna try to probably fight this. Just because if the enemy team does get this, though so they're able to take down maybe the first two goals here. Now, they're in a bad spot here, because I'm just gonna go ahead and just run around in circles, because that's what I'm gonna do. Waste their time. Which we do quite well in that sense. We burn two Unite moves. We get really tough to Unite move. That makes this Zapdos very, very easy to pick up if we decide to do it. And again, they're just going to chase you as Lucario. That's what you really want. You want to waste their time so you can try to get a goal if you're able to. But if not, it's all good. Because in the early game, you generally stack your attack weight so you don't have to sit here and focus on goal all, all game. You want to do this in the early game, that way you get your value out of the damage that you can get for extreme speed. But either way, this build has been working right now for me. I don't know about you guys. At the end of the day, I know you guys run Power Punch and or extreme speed, so it works vice versa. I think extreme speed is just a lot better. But each to own. This has been Paul's Place. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. You need to smash that like button, hop in the Discord so we can get in and start playing some Master Games together as a group. Either way, I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm going to head out.